it's a pleasure to be able to just participate. Um, the question is, what was the relevance of that movie in reference to to our lives today? Um, I, I just a lot went through my mind. Um, uh, he was Oscar was a family man. He was a young man. He was a son. He had a mother. He had a daughter. Uh, he had a uh, a healthy relationship, and what what relevance that brought up for me was someone has to be responsible for the lives of other human beings. Um, you can't just take a life and you not be responsible for your actions. And so that leads me to um, do we, how do we build a new relationship with law enforcement? That, that's where that leads me. Because if law enforcement is turned up, and I'm using a common term here, I'm using a common term here, if law enforcement is turned up, if there's aggression and animosity and intensity in their actions, and we come in contact with them, and we have animosity, aggression, and we come in contact with one another, what is going to be the outcome? So the relevance is, is that everyone who's visualized or seen this movie has to take an inside look at themselves. Because when you come in contact with law enforcement, understand this. They don't know who you are. And if any threat pops up, they may respond to us in the wrong way. That's the relevance that that question that the movie has for me today. Thank you, Donnell. Uh, any other student who wants to take another uh, uh, response to that? Okay. Hold him. Well, the thing that caught my eye was uh, when he was uh, really throwing away the, the drugs and all that. I seen that he really wanted to change. Uh, maybe he didn't have the guidance or the support that we have now. We building up this, this uh, program here for that. Uh, so basically, uh, I believe he didn't have the support or something like that. And uh, he, he, was, he was working, lost his job, came back, tried to get it, couldn't get it. So he had to go do the wrong thing. And uh, that's basically what I, you know, what I got. So the next question we had for the student panel, um, I think many times, uh, you know, many of our students here at College of Alameda come from Oakland, East Oakland, um, other par parts of Alameda, where reality is that they encounter a lot of the same uh, structural inequalities that we saw displayed in the film. Um, so with that being said, a question to the students are, what control do we have as students and educators if faced with same circumstances to change the outcome? So we're going to start this one off with Darrell, and then uh, we'll go to the next student after that. So the question again was, what control do we have as students and educators if faced with same circumstances to change the outcome? Well, a big part we got is today right here. We students, I mean, we teachers, and we put this together right here, and this is very powerful. We got people coming here. And we talking about how we feel about our community, how we can get it better, showing y'all movies, and always just coming together, eating together, like with no violence, no drama, no shootings, like this right here. It's, this one thing right here is powerful. A lot of things we can do is just like, like just connect, reach out, and like just talk to a neighbor because like a lot of the stuff that we talk about in our class is like we normally don't talk about that outside of this class because everybody don't talk about the same kind of stuff, like like an outside conversation, they talk about like what you finna do this weekend, what you finna wear, where you, where you, where you finna go. 
but we don't never have these conversations how we having right now or when we have in the classroom. So it's like, I feel like this right here is a big tool. It's just, just using like, we ain't, we, ain't, we ain't use a lot of money. We ain't use a lot of nothing like that. It's just use your regular every day, your voice. Just use your people skills. Just reach out and talk to somebody. You feel me? Ask a question. Just be, or like educate somebody. You feel me? Tell them something they don't know. Just, you know, big power. Just using your mouth. It ain't hard. Just talk to a neighbor. Thank you, Darrell. Uh, next student want to share their opinion on that one? Either one? Okay, uh, does uh, any student in the audience maybe want to add to, to that? And what's your name? Halisi, all right, here you go. Okay, so I feel that it's very necessary for everybody to take it upon their self, to look within their self and see what it is that they could do with their self. Because if you can't help yourself, it'll be very hard for you to help anyone else. So first and foremost, when you're in a heated situation, you have to worry about doing what? Checking yourself. Because we see that when he was trying to check his partner to calm down, it escalated into something else. You know what I mean? But if everybody would have stayed cool, sat down and been cool, it could have been a different outcome. Now, of course, Emotions come into play, and it's hard to check yourself in an emotional state. I've been there. I've been in and out of jail, doing a whole bunch of stuff. And, like, I got three kids now, right? And when my kids came into play, I'm like, I ain't living for myself no more. I'm living for them. So it's like, I can't put myself in these situations. I got to check myself. Because now not, it's not about self anymore. How am I going to help my kids if I can't help myself? So I'm doing a whole lot of things that are different, going to school and everything like that. And it's just, it's real important for us to look at self before we look at someone else. Thank you, Halisi. Uh, Uncle Bob, you want to add something? Uh, I'm, I'm going to add two things. Um, first, on the relevance, right, what was really critical in the movie was the fact that um, Oscar is like your brother, your cousin, your friend, somebody's father in here, you know, an uncle. And so the humanity of us was really rele relevant in the, in the movie that you just seen. And so, um, you know, I really wanted to get that out there so that you can see just how important it is that we respect each other's humanity. Now, the contribution that students and educators can um, do to this is what I've learned in our experience with, had it not been for the community embracing us as a family, loving us, right? Uh, utilizing your First Amendment right to speak to the very injustice that you saw, right? Praying for the family, you know, allowing the family to lean on you for support. Had it not been for the community, had it not been for the students, now had it not been for those that work, the labor uh, uh, part of it, uh, we wouldn't have been able to do this. So as a family, we wouldn't have been able to stand. So critically for you is to embrace not just the family, but the issue. Don't wait till it happens to your family. Embrace the issue now and understand that we have a situation that we can resolve, at least be begin to bring changes by getting involved. So by putting on this event was tremendous, like the young student said. You know, coming to this event and being a partaker in it and, and being fed this information is critical. But now take what you have and share it with others and recognize we are our brother's keeper. We have to become involved because it could come to your front door. Thank you for the wisdom. Thank you. The next question we had in mind was actually for Kenny. Um, Kenny, if we can ask your perspective, uh, looking back in your experience, in one of the last uh, scenes of the movie, the reenactment of, of the scene where, where the shooting actually happened, what was that like for you reenacting that, that scene in the movie? Well, uh, for me, I would say that scene was, you know, it, w it was surreal just because, you know, 
in the platform, they still have the gunshot, you know, from the actual shot that was fired that killed Oscar. So, you know, you can still see the little scratches in the pavement or the divot, what have you. And, um, you know, we have Michael B. Jordan lay right there, and he actually, you know, got shot in that same uh, location. So it was just crazy because it's like, you know, I mean, we, I mean, everything about that scene was like basically, you know, um, reenacting from what really happened, you know, in real life. So it was like, you know, from the clothes to the way we were dressed, I mean, everything was the same. So it was like, you know, watching what actually happened in real life and then seeing what we were doing, it just kind of made you feel like you were really there, like you were really a part of that scene at the time. So for me, it was like, you know, I mean, it was a very, you know, serious moment. And you really, you know, we even said a prayer before we even, you know, did that shot because it was like, you know, we're right here right now. And I mean, for me, it was just, it, I mean, it was a powerful moment, you know. And so, um, I mean, man, just everything that happened to Oscar that night is just, you know, it's just crazy. I mean, right now, even I'm kind of like at a loss for words, you know. Every time I watch that scene, it's just kind of, you know, makes me remember. But, um, yeah, I mean, it was just crazy that, you know, we were actually there and, you know, shooting it again, so. Thank you, Keddie. Uh, the next question we had was for, for Oscar's uncle again. Um, can you share with us your opinion on how Oscar Grant was portrayed in the film and just your opinion overall on, on that? Um, so how Oscar was portrayed in the film was very accurate. You know, when Ryan came to us to share um, his idea about doing this movie, he actually came to the family, you know, of course, Forrest Whitaker called. But Ryan expressed that he wanted to share the humanity aspect of Oscar. And I'm sure many of you may know, the last part of the trial, Oscar was criminalized, he was uh, demonized, and he was even demoralized, right? I mean, that was very painful for us. And we thought that was extremely unfair. And if you had heard Tracy say, she's not gonna let that verdict define her son, Trayvon, you understand, she understood exactly what we went through. And if you can hear what she's saying, if you can hear what I'm saying, you understand how important it was for Oscar to be viewed by you so that you can know him and walk in his shoes and, and understand the empathy so that you can relate to the situation. So we, we give much praises to Michael B. Jordan because he internalized Oscar's spirit to such a degree. For us to watch the film is like Oscar comes back to life. So it's extremely painful uh, any time that I watch it. And so today I'm getting better at not watching it before I speak because when I watch it before I speak, emotionally, I'm, I'm just overtaken, you know, and so I speak more from emotion of pain and really anger from seeing that because it's so realistic, you know. Um, you know, I, I did want to share this. Another contribution I didn't say, which is so significant for you students, is to be expressive in an artistic way, whatever way that is, that God had given you your gift. You know, and through Oscar, we saw many different forms of art. Through Ryan, we saw expressed in film. Through many, it's being expressed in hip hop, through music. You know, so we can change this paradigm of this, 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 this pain that we're seeing by the expression of your artistic ability, whether it be through poetry, spoken word, hip hop, art. You know, express yourself and address it, you know, because it's so powerful. Thank you again for all the, all the wisdom that you've, that you've shared with us. Um, this is an opportunity for now the, the audience to ask a couple questions of uh, either Kenny or, or uh, Oscar's uncle. Does anyone have a question? I see one in the back. So please say your name and then go ahead and say the question. My name is Nikki. Do you feel that um, the way that, okay, the way that Oscar's attitude was, do you think that's really accurate? Like, was he really like that? Okay. 
So again, of course, Michael B. really internalized Oscar's spirit. You know, and, and many people was concerned about the movie, whether, you know, the rendition of Hollywood making a movie, how accurate it would be of the individual that they're portraying. There was one scene in there that um, uh, wasn't totally accurate. And that scene was when Oscar was in San Quentin. Him and his mom would have had a fight in that prison had he had expressed himself like that to her. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they would have been fighting for real. <laughs> <laughs> you know. But that's for clarity's sake, right? But the dog scene, of course, the fish fry scene, I mean, we got calls from all over the world concerning those two particular scenes. You know, is that true? Oscar had a love for animals. And I can share different stories concerning just the relationship with animals. But he also had a grandmama, my mama, who we grew up on, fried fish, catfish at that. And so, and you know, my mother, I can remember the day my mother said, you know, Oscar called me talking about somebody wanted to know how to fry fish. You know, I mean, I thought that was really funny. But the, the, the bottom line is, is that Oscar character was really portrayed to such a degree and, and where he was trying to go in his life was portrayed so accurately. But again, uh, if, if there was any critical point in that film, that was even a little hard for my sister to digest was that prison scene. So yes, that was different. <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions? All right. Hello, my name is Marquise Turner. I'm part of the Men of Color Initiative and Brotherhood. Questions for um, Oscar's you know, Uncle Bob, right? Um, question is, um, when you watch the movie or when you not even watch the movie, but think about that night. If you could see Oscar that day, and before he went, what advice what would you have told him if you could have said something to him that day? Uh, thank you for that question, because it's so important for you to hear these words that I'm getting ready to share with you. At 1249, Oscar was in my spirit really hard. I didn't know what was going to happen, and this is critical, right? I was being prompt to call Oscar, but I texted him. And what I told Oscar was that God loves him, God loves your family, and Uncle loves you. I just responded to the feeling. And so, so my word to all of you, anytime you're prompted in your heart to reach for a loved one, reach for that loved one, because they may be asking for some word of wisdom or some word of help, or it may be your last opportunity to share some love to them. So I am so thankful. And, if, and that's what helped me keep the anger away. I got really grateful and thankful that I had that opportunity and I responded. But the words of wisdom that I would have given him that day was the fact of what I just said. Was that, you know, Oscar was becoming a great father. He had always been a father, but he used to express to me about becoming even a better father, how it was important for him to put Tatiana in private school, just the changes he was making in his life. And so I would have said just the same thing pretty much that I said that night. Man, Unc, love you, do the right thing, and always take care of your family, you know, and be the best father that you can be. So I believe those would have been the words, because actually those were some of the words that I shared with them in our last actual conversation. You know, and so, you know, I, I'm grateful, but I hope you heard what I'm saying. If a loved one is prompted in your heart, reach out to them. Because we never know the day, time, or hour when that loved one may leave us, or the simple fact that your words may have, could, could have changed a bad situation. Thank you for sharing such uh, personal experiences with us. Appreciate it again. So we have time for one last question. Hi, my name is Trevor, Trevor Michaels, and I have a question actually for anybody, but I'm thinking about Uncle Bobby here because it's been six years since Oscar died, was killed, and it's been two years since Trayvon Martin was killed, and what, a scant year since uh, Andy Lopez was killed, and I wondered if um, I like what you said about embracing the issue. I think it's going beyond just checking yourself. Embrace the issue. And uh, I just wonder if you see any things that can be done like in, you know, in relation to these, all these different things. Uh, 
another quick story, you know, because th things just don't happen. You know, and we have to be responsive to what we feel in our heart. On February 27th, we was in Chicago, my wife and I, and we got a call that another young man had been murdered. His name was Trayvon Martin. He had been murdered on February the 26th. And we knew at that time, because we was already struggling with the fact that Oscar had been murdered, that we had to go to Florida to embrace. So my words of what we can do as a community is to begin to uh, be involved. You know, the only way this change is going to come, the only way that it will become a visual on a national level is for you, especially students, to become involved. So we do have, uh, for instance, a couple of things that are happening this month. This is Black History Month, but it is also uh, Trayvon Martin's birthday, which we just came back from Florida being with the family. Uh, the 26th of February at uh, San Jose State, we're screening the movie Fruitvale Station, and we will also have a panel discussion. But also on the 27th, the Emmett Till family will be at San Jose State, along with the Oscar Grant family, the Andy Lopez family, the Wayne's family, and um, the Alan Bluford family should be there. And the families will be talking about this very issue that we're talking about today. So if you can come out, or you should come out so that you can feel, because you have to feel what, this fam what the families feel in order to really understand. Because it's really not even about us. It is about your babies. It's not about what's going to happen for you today. It's what's going to happen for them tomorrow. So if we fail, or if you fail, I should say you, because it really is about you today in your responsibility to become involved, in your responsibility to go down to um, February the 26th, the Fruitvale Bark Station, I believe it is, um, on the 26th, you know, which is local for those that can't come to San Jose and participate. Think about what kind of life your babies will have. It is your responsibility to begin to get involved and change the condition of the society, because I'm telling you, you will pain like I pain. You will pain like the Emmett Till family. You will pain like the Alan Bluford family if you fail in your responsibility to stand up now. Think about your babies. What kind of life will they have? And that's the, I would hope the best advice that I can give is not about today, it's about tomorrow. We got to build a better future. So get involved. Yeah, so I definitely just want to kind of build on that point that you just said, Uncle Bob, because that's real. People got to definitely try and make a change because, like, me, for example, I get harassed by the police all the time. I was just on my lunch break at work the other day. Um, gang unit pulls me over, pulled me out of my car, handcuffed me, throw me on the sidewalk, you know, go through all my car, throw all my stuff, you know, on the ground, whatever. You know, um, when that type of stuff happens, you know, you don't get no apology, you know, you don't get nothing like that. They don't say sorry. It's just over, you know, go back on with your life, you know, but at the same time, people that's dealing with that, you know, we got to try and, you know, make something happen because, you know, I was talking to my aunt about that situation and she's like, you know, well, uh, I mean, that's just how it is, you know, you got to, you know, deal with it. And to me, you know, I don't really accept that, you know, I'm not like that's just how it is, you know. <clears throat> You know, to me, if you accept the fact that you can't make change, or you just accept the fact that that's just how it is, to me, that's almost like dying, you know? You know, it's almost like being dead inside. So, you know, trying to provoke change and trying to make things, you know, go a different way, to me, is important. So, accepting that that's just how it is, you know, I feel like people got to get away from that and really try and make something happen, and, you know, some type of movement. I know it's more difficult, because nowadays, you know, it's a little less direct than it was, like, in the 50s or 60s. It's not like okay, um, you can't drink from this water fountain, or you can't go here or go there. You know, it's a little bit different now, but um, people got to realize that, you know, we're not necessarily where we want to be. We're not really even close. So, you know, don't accept that. It's just how it is or whatever. If you feel like it's in your heart that you want to make a change and you want to make something happen, then go do that, you know. And uh, especially the young people, man, we really got to, you know, try and come together regardless of, you know, where you're from or where you grew up or, you know, whatever the case may have you that separates people of color, you know, we really got to come together and try and embrace change, so. Can we be, uh, please give a, a, a standing round of applause for all the panelists here who came and volunteered their time.
b before uh, everyone heads out, there's one last thing we want to share with you guys. So if you could please uh, have a seat for five more minutes. Um, I, I want to just share uh, one story that we had uh, with students and, and Jamar and Vanson, who were the, the main organizers to this event. And we talked about, you know, watching the, the, this film is something that, that invokes anger. Um, and we talked about, is this something that we want to um, share with, with students in this, in this, in this environment? And our response was yes, because we feel that sometimes we need anger to become passionate, to do what, what Uncle Bob and, and what Kenny just said, to actually take action to change some of the things that are still going on in our communities to this day and age. Um, yes, it's important to recognize that we've made progress since the 50s and 60s, but there's still a long way for us to continue to fight for, for true and e uh, equality. Uh, so that's something that we must not forget, and we urge you to use your education uh, as a tool to actually fight towards that, that justice. Our uh, education is so much more than what we're taught in, uh, in, in, our, in many of our schools, which is supposedly to just get a better job. Education is so much deeper than that, right? As they mentioned, education is for our families, it's for our children, it's for our community as a whole. And that's what sometimes we forget. 